Hello everyone and uh, welcome to my second workshop. Um, this workshop has been designed in order to inform education and skills international school teachers about uh, the effective learning environments of the observation tool Elliot 2.0. Now as you know our teachers are being observed once by a teacher's observation tool and their learning environment is also observed uh, with this effective learning environment observation tool ELIA 2.0. So in order to be well prepared this uh, workshop has been designed to analyze and simplify the Effective Learning Environment Observation Tool 2.0. Okay, now, um, the Observation Tool LEA 2.0 begins with Domain A, which is Equitable Learning Environment. Number one, learners engage in differentiated learning opportunities and or activities that meet their needs. Now, what does that mean? Well, differentiated has many, many meanings. Number one, differentiated means that the lesson has been designed in order to help students um, who are approaching the level and students who are at the level and for students who are actually surpassing the level. So. Basically, uh, when we come into your lesson uh, to observe your learning environment, we will be looking for uh, a lesson that will actually address uh, at level students and below level students. and also students who are above average. Now you might say, well, how do I do that? Well, you might have a worksheet which is very, very easy for the below level students. The at level students, you might ask them to do um, some kind of a more advanced activity, such as using the information in order to recreate something new. And students who are above average actually might be the assessors uh, who, will, who might use a checklist that will assess the at-level students. There are many um, different activities online that you can look at. Uh, which basically address the issue of differentiated learning. So yes, when we come into your class, we will be looking for differ differentiated learning. Now, differentiated learning opportunities, though, in the Elliott 2.0, doesn't really just mean, though, that we are looking for differentiated learning activities. We are also looking for differentiated learning opportunities such as pair work, group work, an individualized uh, an individualized activities you have to have <clears throat> a variety of activities in your class differentiated in um, uh, the Elliot 2.0 also means you might want to address kinesthetic learners kinesthetic means um, via motion, via movement, audio, uh, visual. So you can have um, activities that are basically, some of them may be visual, some of them may be kinesthetic, and some of them may be audio. Some of them may be pair work, group work, and others might be individualized activities. And at the same time, you can have differentiated uh, learning activities for students who are above average, at level, and below level students. So 
that's basically uh, number one. Uh, number two, learners have equal access to classroom discussions, activities, and resources. Now, what does that mean? It means that uh, students, all students should have the opportunity to speak in class. All students should have the opportunity, the opportunity, the opportunity to speak in class. Very important. Teachers should not be um, choosing the same students over and over again to speak. They should basically uh, try to choose the students who will speak randomly. And also the resources, crayons, pencils. Um, if you have technology in the class, make sure that uh, all students get an equal chance to go to the smart board and participate. Okay, number three. Number three, learners are treated in a fair, clear, and consistent manner. Okay, this means, number three means that teachers um, should have the same, the same expression on their face when they're talking to a student. Students really pay attention to that. Uh, students pay attention to the uh, type of attention that a teacher gives each student, to the expression on their faces, from their tone of their voice. They're very, very sensitive. They know when a teacher uh, treats them fairly. So pl please be very, very careful with that. Uh, also, when you're choosing your students, uh, make sure that you choose them equally. Um, there is a very nice tool on Class Dojo, which uh, is a random selector. So you can go on Class Dojo and randomly select your students. And this way, uh, when there's five hands up, uh, then you just press on the button, uh, the Class Dojo random button, and you can choose the student that Class Dojo says rather than um, the one that you think uh, should speak. You can also put Class Dojo on the smart board and show students that the computer actually chose who's going to speak. That actually will stress the fact that you are trying to be fair. Um, as I said before, tone and the expression on your faces should always be the same, which means consistent. That's what this means. Okay, let's move on to number four. Learners demonstrate and or have opportunities to develop empathy. What does empathy mean? Empathy means when you have, uh, you're able to put your place in the other person's position and feel how he or she feels. This is what empathy is. So students should be taught to have empathy and respect for each other and appreci appreciation. So in other words, when somebody raises their hand and they get the opportunity to speak in class, all students should show respect and they shouldn't make uh, weird faces or uh, weird remarks that will basically insult the other student. Also, when there is work, uh, group work um, taking place in class, the teacher has to make sure that all students use this proper type of uh, communication uh, among themselves and, the res and promote respect. In other words, if a teacher sees a uh, student uh, who is isolated or basically uh, not respected by the other students, she should encourage students to respect that student with different ways. Uh, for example, she might interfere, she might, sorry, she might interrupt a conversation that may be going on between two student, students that's not going so well, and she might say, well, why are you, okay, what, does, what is Nora trying to say, okay? Um, did you listen to Nura before you answered? Um, please give Nura a chance to speak. Please listen carefully before you reply. Uh, teachers are not just um, deliverers of information. They are, actu they are actually promoters of good um, social behavior and uh, etiquette. So it's very, very important that a teacher uh, promotes good communication among classmates. Very, very important. And also teaches empathy. Uh, how do you feel? What do you think Nura feels right now? Um, how would you feel if you were in Nura's position? So <clears throat> please pay close attention to that. Okay, let's go to B now. We are on B. High expectations environment. Okay, number one. Learners strive to meet or are able to articulate the high expectations established by themselves and or by themselves and or the teacher. Okay, what does that mean? It means that articulate means to 
use everything that they have in themselves in order to get something done okay so um number one teachers uh, should not make activities very very easy that that is what high expectations means here um <clears throat> The activity should actually um, uh, expect uh, a lot more than what the student can do because the more you push a student, the more likely they are to learn uh, to surpass themselves. Uh, at the same time, learners should be, feel comfortable uh, in order to meet or um, are able to articulate high expectations. If a learner is not comfortable in the classroom, they will not be able to meet these high expectations. So that's why basically B1 is actually, can be connected to A4 as well, because A4, you see A4, is actually talking about respect and proper behavior and proper communication. Uh, A4 will actually lead to B, to B1, okay? Uh, in other words, if a student feels comfortable and they are taught how to communicate properly, then they will probably also be able to meet high expectations because of encouragement of others and the teacher. So make sure you encourage your students and make sure that students are encouraging each other. That's very, very important. B2. B2. Learners engage in activities and learning that are challenging but attainable. Now here, attainable means Okay, it's um, basically um, a teacher can uh, challenge a student, but not to the point where the student can't do the work. It has to be attainable. Attainable is something that can be done. So make sure that the uh, level of degree of an activity is actually attainable, that a student will be able to complete it as long as he or she pushes himself. Let's continue. Learners demonstrate, we're on B3 now, B3. Learners demonstrate and or are able to describe high quality work. Now this is a very interesting point because a lot of teachers forget to talk to their students and ask them to explain their work. Sometimes when we explain something, it's actually like we're thinking aloud. And then when we're thinking aloud, we can actually uh, grasp uh, things a lot better. And even we can also run into errors that we would not have run into if we had not been given the chance to speak aloud. So speaking aloud really gives a person the opportunity to express themselves and to think aloud. And also it gives their peers the opportunity to um, um, provide their input in order to uh, bring about the best possible uh, result. Okay, now before, Learners engage in rigorous coursework, discussions, and or tasks that require use of higher order thinking, analyzing, applying, evaluating, and synthesizing. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, this is kind of tied into uh, Bloom's taxonomy, okay? B4 is actually tied into uh, Bloom's taxonomy. I'm not sure if you know what Bloom's taxonomy is. If you don't, please um, Google it. Bloom's taxonomy has uh, different various levels, and the first one is remembering, the second one is understanding, analyzing, applying, and evaluating are also different parts of Bloom's taxonomy. So as teachers, um, you should be familiar with Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's, it's called Bloom's taxonomy. Okay, make sure that your, uh, that your lesson basically covers all of Bloom's uh, levels uh, of Bloom's taxonomy, understanding, remembering, recalling, and at the same time, uh, analyzing and recreating. It's very, very important. Okay, number five, learners take responsibility and are self-directed in learning. Okay, this is a very important part about learning in class. Students should be given uh, checklists or, um, or rubrics where they'll be able to go back and check their work. Uh, self-directed learning is very important because in today's world, if we are not self-directed, uh, we will not be able to function. There are far too many things going on, and if we do not have the ability to self-direct ourselves, we can never uh, be efficient and basically succeed. So basically, these are all the parts of Elliot 2.0. Um, um, this is part one.
This is part one. Okay, please, please tune in to the next video, uh, which is going to have the remaining parts of the Elliott Observation Tool 2.0. Thank you for watching. And please don't forget to take the online test. If you don't, you will not be given a certificate for this workshop. Thank you.